intentions of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'm going to start with a very pedestrian question. Is Did I do this microphone thing right? <laughs> I did? Okay, good. It's so wonderful to be back with you this morning, St. Philip. I, as I was preparing to preach today, um, usually when I prepare to preach, I read all of the readings and I look for what is God, what's sparkling to me in the reading that I am being called to, sit, to talk about. And this time, I what sparkled to me was a sentence from the first of the three readings that we read today. So I'm sorry, this isn't going to be a homily about vines and branches and Kevin back and figures, maybe we can have that homily. But this time around, it was that sentence, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. And, and I looked at it, and I was like, I don't know why this sentence is standing out to me, but this is the sentence, so let me follow it. And I realized when the sentence stands out to me, it's because it's about now. You know, we read the scriptures, they're from a long time ago, and they're about other people. But what stands out is always about us and here and now. And I didn't understand why that was true about this sentence until I was like multiple minutes into my sermon prep. And that's when I put together that the he in this sentence is the he that you are named for. Philip. You've heard you've heard of St. Philip's. <laughs> And I don't know how your founders decided that this was the person that they were going to name the church after. But if anybody here is the archivist of St. Philip's, I encourage you to go figure out. They did a great job picking Philip as the person to name the church for. He's an incredible <coughs> saint, and he's an incredible human being. Philip is mentioned in all four Gospels, but it's the Gospel of John that tells us the most about him. And in the Gospel of John, Philip shows up in the very first chapter. He's among the first four people to get, to get it about Jesus. I don't know how to put it any better than that. He is, he is after John the Baptist, after Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, you get Philip who is the first person to whom Jesus says, follow me. And Philip immediately follows Jesus. And as soon as he follows Jesus, the very first thing that he does is he goes and tells somebody else about Jesus. He goes and tells Nathaniel. And he says, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of God, Joseph, I'm sorry, Jesus, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Anybody remember what uh, Nathaniel replies? Can anything good really happen out of Nazareth? Like, <laughs> are you sure about this? Like, this doesn't, that does not compute with my understanding of how the world works. Um, and Philip says to, to Nathaniel, come find out for yourself. Come and see. I love this story about Philip, and I am making this story about you because this story is about you. This is your namesake. Your namesake is somebody who was willing immediately to talk about Jesus in the, in the world and invite people to discover this Jesus for themselves. Now, Philip isn't, it, we call him a saint because he knew Jesus at first hand. Not because he was a perfect person. Not because he was a better kind of person than you or than I. In the Episcopal Church, we honor all the original disciples as saints. And the reason that we honor them that way is that we heard about Jesus through them. And we heard about Jesus through them when it wasn't a safe time to be a Christian. It's 2024 now, 
And when I say talk about Jesus, we all have ideas about what talking about Jesus means. Um, we, we might even have um, a sense of, this is not my script, so I'm trying to figure out how to say it. <laughs> we might even have a sense that um, there are political implications to talking about Jesus. And we might even feel like, depending upon our political proclivities, it's okay or not okay to talk about Jesus because of what other people assume about Jesus. That wasn't what I'm really trying to say. That was very wishy-washy. Um, when we talk about Jesus now, sometimes it seems like we have to peel back everybody's assumptions about who Jesus is. And I feel almost a sense of envy for Philip. He only had a set of assumptions to peel back, which were, yeah, he's from Nazareth. That means he's probably not worth much. Can you imagine that being the set of assumptions that people were dealing with when you talked about Jesus today? He's probably not worth much. He's from Nazareth. That's not what anyone is going to assume about you if you start talking about Jesus to them. They're going to bring their church trauma if they came from a traumatic church experience. They're going to bring their political trauma because it's 2024 in the United States of America. And yet, Philip, your namesake, talked to people about Jesus because Jesus is worth talking about. It's worth knowing. It's worth sharing. And like Philip, our lives can proclaim the good news about Jesus. Philip, he proclaimed to him the good news. So who's the him? I got back on my script. I'm very excited. <laughs> the him is the Ethiopian eunuch. He is not a member of the tribes of Israel, but he worships Israel's God. He's on the inside and the outside at the same time. His employer, the queen, has given him permission to come to Jerusalem for a festival. And now he's returning home by a wilderness road, and he's reading scripture, same scripture we would be reading, Prophet Isaiah, trying to figure out who God is. Like we're here, trying to figure out who God is. And God sends Philip to this wilderness road to encounter this Ethiopian eunuch. Just pause there. God sends Philip to someone he does not know, in a place he does not know. He sends Philip to someone from a different culture, a different country, someone whose skin color is different from his own, Someone whose native language is different from his own. And someone who doesn't really belong. He's just passing through, trying to figure out what belonging means. God loves this Ethiopian eunuch enough to make sure that he finds out about Jesus. That's why God sends Philip there. And the Spirit prompts Philip to get closer and closer to this stranger that doesn't belong. He takes the risk of getting in a stranger's chariot. He really kind of puts his life in this stranger's hands at that point. He takes a risk to proclaim Jesus. And as Philip gets to know this Ethiopian eunuch in this moment, um, and I'm relieved that there aren't any children here because this is the slightly um, this is the slightly, uh, I don't know, delicate part of the sermon. Um, he realizes that this Ethiopian eunuch worships Israel's God, but he can't really belong to Israel's God. It's not because he's Ethiopian. It's because he's a eunuch. And the sign of belonging is circumcision. This Ethiopian can't be circumcised. So he can't belong to the God he's trying to worship until he hears about Jesus. And when he hears about Jesus, he realizes that the God that he's hearing about in the prophet Isaiah is still at work in the world and has done something extraordinary. God has been born as a human being and then 
allowing himself to be killed, and then risen again. This, when I said, hallelujah, Christ is risen, you all responded, hallelujah, Christ is risen, like, yeah, I told you. <laughs> yeah, I know. We've been doing this for five Sundays. We, we know how this works. We've been doing this for 2,000 years. We know how this works. Actually, this is still extraordinary. Um, and it was incredibly extraordinary to the Ethiopian eunuch who had never heard it before. And when the Ethiopian eunuch hears it, he says, well, I can belong now. I, what's to stop me from being baptized? I can be baptized right now. And Philip says, yes, you can. Yes, you can belong. Yes, you can be baptized. In fact, I will help you out. I will do it immediately. I see this little area of water. We're going in. That Ethiopian eunuch's life is changed because of the ministry of who? St. Philip. Your St. Philip. And that good news about Jesus that was heard by that Ethiopian eunuch is the same good news that we are here to proclaim today. And it is the same good news that people who aren't sure if they belong still need to hear. Because Christ in our time is unfortunately seen as like an option among many. But as Christians, we know Christ is the creator of all that has ever lived, everything that breathes. And when you belong to Christ, you belong to creation as a healer as someone who loves, as someone who is seeking a better world for those who come after us. And the good news about Jesus is that anyone, no matter what they have done, no matter who they are, anyone who wants to know and love and serve Jesus in the world is welcome, just as we are, to be baptized, to be a disciple, Join the community of very human beings who are seeking to abide in Christ. To be a person who practices love. That's what our readings are about, all of them. Let us love one another because love is from God. With Philip and with the Ethiopian eunuch and with all the people who have proclaimed and practiced Christianity across all the countries and all the generations, we share baptism. We share Eucharist. We share the journey of discipleship where we're trying to figure out every day what is it that God would have me do today. That's the journey of love that St. Paul told us about. Love is patient and kind and is not self-seeking hard to sign up for that, and it's the best because it grows you like nothing else can. We love because he first loved us, and we are still loved to love others. And a long time ago, or maybe not so long, in the 50s, there were people in Benzie County, maybe any of you or any of you around when this church got founded as little units. Somebody else made this church for you so that you could come and know God. And when they did, they named it for St. Philip because he was somebody who knew how to proclaim and to practice the good news. Let us give thanks for those who came before you. Let us pray for those who will come after you. And let us practice it. In the name of God, God is up and Holy Spirit.